dreamers gone Have we all just got lazy? Something's got to give There won't be much life left to live Please send a sign from up above And if I gotta choose, I choose love I choose love, I choose love Life left to live Please send a sign From up above And if I gotta choose I choose love I choose love I choose love No one's gonna make me hate I choose love I choose love No one's gonna take that Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Progressive Action TV show. Start off with how you could donate to the platform. You could donate via um, Cash App. The Cash App is on the screen, Progressive Action 100. And you could also um, donate via PayPal. The PayPal is Progressive Action. Hold on one second, man. I'm making it clear today. I don't care about no algorithm. I don't care about any of that today. We're going to show the MTA why I am a disgruntled employee and I'm not alone. What I ask for you guys to do is can you please um, share out the live? Let me see what's going on here one second. I want you guys to share out the live. And... um. To get the word out there. To get the word out there. Like I said, today I don't care about no algorithms. I don't care about getting banned. I don't care about anything today. Today we go tell the truth. As we do every single day. Um, I would like to start off with some business. Uh... This is regarding the overtime lawsuit that we have against the MTA that's coming. I mean, it's here, really. Oh, to be honest, we won the lawsuit. We just need you to opt in. But just to give you guys um, some reference, the MTA was sued for this a few years ago and um, by bridge and tunnel offices. Them, them bridge and tunnel offices won $5.4 million. And um, this was more for more than 160 offices. So the MTA is known for cheating their employees out of um, their benefits. Their wages to be exact. So a lot of people been hitting me up asking me, move over a little bit. Can they have the, uh, the consent form? This is the consent form. This is what it looks like. So if you're a conductor, um, Train operator. We starting off with those departments first. All the other departments, they will get, as far as operational is concerned, they will get theirs probably after we get ours, or maybe you will have to start a whole new lawsuit. I don't know how the MTA may want to do this. Got to put your put. Make sure you put your union offices to work. The union offices need to be doing this. 
not the regular rank and file. I don't even understand, like, why why pay union dues if the rank and file is going to be doing the work for them? You know, it makes no sense. But this is what the um, the consent to join collective um, action form. Um, I've been getting screenshots. People have been sending me screenshots of people saying, is the lawsuit real? Um, they got to weigh their options to see if they want to opt in. Are you guys that disenfranchised? Are you guys that beat up that you don't even want to fight? It's, it's not even no fight. The fight is already fought. But you don't want to opt in to get your free money. You guys probably letting politics get involved with you getting money that's owed to you. To you guys. Like I said, I don't care about the alg algorithm today. It's for you guys. Man. I wish they had an opt out form. If they had an opt out form, I wish you guys to opt out of the law. Like, don't even be a part of the lawsuit if you think that this is a game. This is not a game. The fight was already won. This is the opt, opt in form. If you want the opt in form, you can email me at progressiveaction100 at gmail.com. That's progressiveaction100 at gmail.com. Or if you're on Facebook, just send me a message. Um, and I will send you the opt-in form via message. What you do is that you print it out, you sign it, you scan it. You can send it back to the email that's on the opt-in form. Or you can send it back to me and I'll send it back to the lawyers. But for to all you guys out there that's saying, oh, I got to see if this is real. Or I got to weigh my odds. What, what odds is it to weigh? The MTA is paying us back our money. The judge already confirmed it. Now it's just, you, you got to do the easy part. Just opt in. The work was already done for you. This guy's is crazy, man. This guy's is crazy. So let's, let's get in. We're not even going to waste no time today. We want to get into what we came here for today. First, let's start off with... Um, now, like I say, I'm very objective. I give I give credit where credit is due. The union, they uh they got with NYU to do a study on the impact of COVID nineteen on the workforce, and I'm gonna go over this um briefly, and and this study basically confirms everything that we already knew. So this just give us extra backing. So now that the union got this extra backing from this New York University study, they should be able to go get us some hazard pay in some form or fashion. But let's let's examine um, this study a little bit. So one of the first things that they said was that possibly many more transit workers were infected than previously thought. Of course we were for the simple fact that you got people who was symptomatic. That was people who was showing symptoms. You got people who was asymptomatic, people who wasn't showing symptoms, so they didn't go get tested. But that doesn't mean that they wasn't infected, right? So the MTA was only trying to count the people who was symptomatic, the people who were showing symptoms. Of course, there were more people infected. And in fact, there was people who was probably sick and still came to work for the simple fact that they needed the money. This is the truth. It says nearly all 90% transit workers in our, um, in, in our August 2020 sample were concerned about getting sick at work. This is true. This is still the story today. Members hit me up every single day worrying about getting sick at work. Every single day about getting sick at work. Let's look at the second the second part of this um, availability of PPE, safety supplies and sanitary protocols. These were significantly more available in July, August 2020 compared to the time before New York City paused March 20, March um, 22nd, 2020. Without a doubt, without a doubt, the MTA denied us PPE in the beginning of this pandemic even with them having a pandemic plan in place. Over 70% are fearful for their safety at work. 
Riders not wearing masks. Riders getting angry when asked to wear masks. Riders attacking them if asked to wear masks. Riders attacking them if they don't enforce mask use on other riders. This is a fact. This is a fact. All them people at two Broadway. First of all, the people who's making the decisions for us never worked in our capacity a day in a life. So they can't tell us what's going on here. And there's a lot of them who did work in our capacity and forgot where they came from. Mental health quality of life problems related to the pandemic were not uncommon. More than half reporting feeling nervous, anxious, on edge, cannot um, control worrying. Um, sleep problems were, were, were reported a very high proportion knew someone at work who had gotten infected with COVID-19 virus and 76% um, percent personally knew someone who had died at work. These are all facts. And what the MTA is doing, denying it, denying it. Lack of trust was evident. Only 30% intended to receive the COVID vaccine when it comes becomes available. 30, 32% say they would not take it and 38% are not sure. Um, the main sources of trusted, reliable information included um, personal health care providers, CDC, Governor Cuomo, and TWU leadership. But these are facts. These are facts. And the MTA, the MTA purposely, purposely try to kill us. Let's make no mistake about it. They know um, who works here. They don't keep these this data for no reason. This is not data to hang on the wall. They know who works here. And they know who works up there with them. They did everything possible to make sure that they was good and didn't do nothing to make sure that we was good until it was too late. So after this this study had hit yesterday, um the media contacted me because I've been in contact with them anyway regarding how the MTA been treating me. And I'm about to go on a media tour. I keep telling them, if I go a thousand percent for the members, what you think I'm going to do for myself? I don't have to convince myself to come forward. I don't have to convince myself to speak. I don't have to convince myself to write emails. I don't have to convince myself to, to, to sit in front of the media. I know what it takes to defend myself against these people. I know what it take. I go a thousand percent for the members. Imagine what I'm going to do for myself because there's no convincing me to do the right thing. It's no convincing me. So what's, what, what got me so not even upset because I'm not even I'm not even really upset because they playing with the wrong one. Let's listen to this interview I did last night. If y'all ain't see it, I did this interview last night on NBC um, with with Checky Beckford, reporter Checky Beckford, and um, let's just watch it and just hear how the MTA lie and 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 let's just get to it, man, because it's, it's frustrating right now. Check it out. Coming back here to the city, as many as one in four transit workers may have contracted COVID-19. Now, that's according to a preliminary survey just released by NYU researchers. News Force Jackie Beckford's been looking into it. She spoke tonight to two recovered MTA employees, one of whom says he spent seven months out of work, all of it unpaid. Our membership was scared that they was going to die. MTA conductor Chris Drummond was one of them. He tested positive for COVID-19 in March. One of the 25% of NYC transit workers, a new NYU study says, may have contracted the virus throughout the pandemic. You would see people one day, and the next day you would hear that they were dead or on the ventilator. 
The Transit Workers Union says it asked for the study, which took an anonymous survey of more than 600 workers, to better understand how the virus spreads. But NYC Transit officials aren't buying that one in four workers had COVID when its own numbers show only a 7% infection rate. Basically, took a smaller group of employees, uh, you know, sent a survey, uh, whoever responded, responded. But MTA critics say the agency has long ignored the impact of the virus that has killed. More than 100 of its workers. We fight them every day. Uh, it's, it's an ongoing fight. Joe Romano is a workers' compensation lawyer who says his firm is litigating hundreds of employee COVID cases against the MTA. Tramel Thompson's is one of them. I know I contracted it at work. Despite testing positive in March and winning a recent judgment, Thompson is still involved in litigation with the agency. An MTA spokesman saying in a statement tonight this disgruntled employee continues to make false claims and the MTA is appealing the ruling based on the facts. Now back to the study. It found that 90% of transit workers were worried about contracting the virus. Their main concern, passengers not wearing masks. Now NYC transit officials say they plan to drill down on the methodology of that study to find out how their numbers are so far apart. On the west side, Shecky Beckford, News 4 New York. Down on the methodology of that study to find out how their numbers are so far apart. On the west side, Shecky Beckford. Coming back here to the city, as many as. First of all, thanks for Shecky Beckford for doing the interview. But for the, to the MTA, we don't care about agor algorithm today. Get the fuck out of here! You want to know why y'all numbers are so far apart? It's because y'all are some cold-blooded liars. This whole thing is a lie. The way, oh, there's 90% um, uh, compliance with masks. How can you measure compliance when you're not following the individual from the time they enter the system to the time that they leave? You, don't, you do not know the actual compliance of the mask um, ridership. The riders the rider using masks. You do not know it. You are lying. Straight up. Now, this guy, Tim Mitten, who fell from the graces of reporting by coming to the MTA because it turned him into a cold-blooded liar. I did like him at one time. I did like him at one time, but he is a cold blooded liar. And this company, this MTA company seems to turn these people into devils when they come here. They don't have our back. They don't care about the members. Their comments is just to protect upper management. They do not care about us. Now, this guy says, hold on, let me cue my stuff up, man. This guy says. This disgruntled employee continues to make false claims and the MTA is appealing the ruling based on the facts. Let's deal with the facts here. Let's deal with the facts. You guys is not going to play disgruntled employee. Y'all play the same game with, with, with calling people radicals, leftists. Y'all play the same games. You calling me a disgruntled employee is not going to make me feel any kind of certain kind of way. You know what? I have every right to be disgruntled, if you really want to know. I have every right to be disgruntled. And you guys keep saying I'm making false claims. How I'm making false claims? You guys took me to court. You guys tried to set me up with some false narrative of I'm, I'm committing fraud. You guys was following my car. You guys was in front of my home taking pictures of me and going and, and following me everywhere and pulling up surveillance cameras everywhere. You guys did that. And you guys lost. I didn't lose. If, when I'm, if I'm making false claims, how did I win, a, win, a, win against y'all in court? You guys know that I'm not making false claims, but y'all got to do everything in y'all power to protect that upper level of management at MTA. That don't look like me. That's what it's really about. False claims. I wasn't making no false claims. But like I said, I have every right to be Let's even look into the definition of disgruntled. 
A disgruntled employee is an employee who is dissatisfied with their job and is prone to grumbling about it. I'm not, to be honest, I'm not dissatisfied with my job. I love my job. I'm dissatisfied at the way that you guys treat us. You guys treat us like dirt. You guys treat us like sec second class citizens. You guys don't care about us. Y'all don't care about our health. Y'all don't care about our safety. Y'all don't care about a damn thing with us. Y'all do not care. Y'all show it every day, day in and day out. If I'm such a liar, then why don't Sarah Feinberg come on this show and let me interview her and let me speak to her the way that if she think that I'm lying, she should be able to shut me down. As a matter of fact, I challenge any manager who feel froggy to come up here and say that I'm lying. Tim Minton, come up here and say that I'm lying. Pat Foy, come up here and say that I'm lying. You can't do it. Y'all afraid the death of the truth. Y'all afraid the death to be exposed because y'all know I know. Y'all know I know. But yeah, you right. You right. I am disgruntled. I am angry. I am upset at the way y'all treated us these past seven, eight months. I have every right to. Every right to. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Y'all remember this? Put in a safety rule dispute resolution form saying that the cabs wasn't clean. They say the cabs was clean during the pandemic. It was a lie. It was a lie. Yes, I am upset about that. Why? Because so many of my coworkers got sick and so many passed away. We lost more, co more, more workers at New York City Transit. New York City Transit than six states in the United States of America. And, let, and let's clear something up since they want to talk about lying and all this other stuff. Let's clear it up. How long have that death number, 131 workers, been still? That number been frozen for the past three months. They, they is not even calculating the, the true numbers of workers who died. They haven't calculated it. And that was done on purpose. You want to talk about telling the truth? Why don't y'all tell the truth on how many workers really died due to COVID that work here? Another reason why I'm disgruntled. Ben Valdez put in a safety rule dispute resolution form regarding masks in the, be in the beginning of this pandemic. Do y'all remember that? Y'all remember that? And what happened? The MTA told us that masks were against uniform policy. Look at it. Look at it. It's right there. That masks were against uniform policy. They did not care about our health and safety. They was more worried about us spooking the public. You want to know something? Spooking the public probably wouldn't have been, would have been the best thing to do. Maybe they would have wore masks. Maybe they would have stood off the subways so they wouldn't get sick. Because y'all created this whole narrative that um, workers didn't get sick because of the subway. If we didn't get sick because of the subway, then explain the thousands of infections um, that we that we suffered here and the, and the hundreds of deaths. Way over 131 deaths here. Y'all purposely um, froze that number to try to make it seem like, like the subways were safe to ride. It was a pearl lie. That's why you guys didn't do your own study. It's the main reason why you guys didn't do your own study. Y'all put, what's, the, what's that safety guy name again? Pat Warren. Pat Warren don't know his ass from his elbow. He don't know what's going on here. Not only do he don't know what's going on here, he don't care. He don't care. Look at them MTA board meetings. Look at those MTA board meetings. To, 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 my, to my white brothers and sisters, I love y'all. I love y'all. You guys, whether y'all want to believe it or not, Y'all collateral damage for people who look like me. Y'all collateral damage for people who look like me. They don't care about you guys either. When you look at that MTA board and they having that MTA board meeting, those people do not look like the majority of this membership. That's a whole nother fight within itself. I don't understand how there's so many black and brown people at the bottom of this company. But as you rise to the top, we, we so far and few in between. And the ones that we do got up there, they not for us either because they so busy trying to trying to fit in with them. 
and continue to punish us and not stand up for what's right. I know what's going on up there. I know what's going on up there. Let's get back to why I'm disgruntled because I want y'all to know why I'm disgruntled and I'm not alone. I'm not alone. I want y'all to see this face right here. This was my friend. I want y'all to see his face right here. This is my friend. This Nevi Lakayo. He was a conductor. He's the reason why I'm disgruntled. He's the reason why I'm disgruntled. See, I, I don't really talk about a lot of the stuff that 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 that's that I know. That I know that I've been through here because y'all think that this is a game. Y'all think that I'm 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 acting. I'm faking. Y'all think that I'm not going through nothing. Out of the, the 131 deaths that was here, I knew I knew like seven personally, seven of them personally, which I wasn't able to mourn properly for them. Yeah, I got every right to be damn disgruntled. Nevi Lakayo, message me in the middle of this pandemic. I'm going to show y'all what he messaged me, man. I'm going to show y'all a piece of what he messaged me. This was a conversation between me and Nevi Lakayo. Now, for those who don't know, Nevi passed away because of this whole COVID thing here. The MTA failed him. The MTA failed. Let me go back to that picture. Let me go back to that picture. The MTA failed him. The MTA failed his wife. And the MTA failed his kids. They need to know that. This company failed them. Failed them. Let me go back to the message. This is what he sent me. Hey, Tramel, it doesn't look like they disinfect inside the cabs where train operators or train conductors work. These are the wipes after I clean these MDC, the master door controller, and where we talk. This, this was my operating cab, 9478. So when the MTA was saying that they was cleaning the cabs, they was not cleaning those cabs. Look how dirty, look how dirty those napkins is. This is Nevi Lakai. He died because of COVID here. He died. I have every right to be disgruntled. Every damn right. Y'all was cleaning the cabs and then I put in a safety rule dispute resolution form because he sent me that. And when I was trying to, when I was cleaning my cab, I seen mine wasn't clean either. But you want to know what you guys said? I'm going to go back to what you guys said. You guys said train cabs are being cleaned by car equipment department. No reduction in CR functions at this time. You guys are cold-blooded liars. Cold-blooded liars. Why his cab looked like this if he cleaned it? He passed away because you guys failed him. You guys don't give a damn about the membership here. You guys don't give a damn about us. I'm going to show you guys how much you guys didn't give a damn about us. Remember this? Remember this? What should a manager supervisor do if an employee wears a mask at work? If a manager supervisor is made aware of an employee wearing a mask, they should tell the employee that masks may not be worn by employees during work hours and explain the reasons detailed above. Are you are you fucking kidding me? Are you kidding me? We sitting here dying because of COVID. Dying. And you guys telling us that we shouldn't wear masks during work hours? You guys thought I forgot? You guys really thought that 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 I forget. I got every right to be disgruntled and upset and pissed off at y'all. Every every right, every right, every right. Y'all remember this? Do y'all remember this? Y'all was telling bus operators that face masks were not to be issued to bus. How many bus operators did we lose? How many bus operators did we lose? They telling me that 
I'm dis- I have every right to be disgruntled. You guys failed us. You guys failed us. Sarah Feinberg, you failed us. Pat Foy, you failed us. Pat Warren, you failed us. You guys are not leaders. You guys don't don't care about nothing outside the movement of these trains, buses. That's all y'all care about. Y'all do not care about us going home and getting our family members sick, our family members dying because you guys failed to protect us. You guys don't give a fuck about what happens to us. Y'all don't care. Remember this? Remember this? You guys had masks the whole entire time. And y'all refused to issue us masks. Remember when I put out this picture of the mask that y'all had hidden in the warehouse that y'all refused to give to us? While we was dropping dead like flies, y'all held on to the vital PPE that we needed. And y'all trying to say I'm a disgruntled employee? I'm I'm very disgruntled. You guys treated us like guinea pigs. You guys didn't give a damn whether we lived, got sick, or survived. You guys did not care. You guys think that I, the biggest lawsuit is going to come eventually down this pipeline. And I hope the families of our fallen brothers and sisters take you guys for everything personally. Personally. You guys need to be sued individually. We talk about um, qualified immunity for police officers. No, we need to hear for New York City Transit also. These bosses, they do stuff. We sue them. The taxpayers end up paying the money. The taxpayers end up paying the money, and these guys keep their jobs, and they continue about their lives while the taxpayers got to pick up the tab. We need to end qualified immunity for New York City Transit also. Sarah Feinberg need to be sued for everything that she got. Pat Foy need to be sued for everything that he got. Or you PR people. Oh, I'm going to get to you PR people. I'm going to handle y'all in another show. Don't think that I ain't find out about you getting arrested for beating up cops. Don't think I don't got the articles on that. Don't think I don't know about that. Don't think don't think I don't know. I'm gonna say I'm gonna save something for you PR people. I'm gonna show how crooked the, the public relations department is. Since y'all y'all don't have our back, y'all protecting the top one percent of transit. Y'all don't care about these black and brown people here. But like I said, like I said, you guys had masks the whole time. And then when I when I when I Put it out that you guys had masks. Guess what happened? You guys started sending out masks the very next day. The very next day, y'all started sending out masks. You guys didn't. I don't understand this company. This company, they, when you talk about being reactive instead of proactive, the MTA is the king of that. They are the kings of that. They do not care about anything until they embarrassed in the media. Maybe they that, that's when they start moving, when they embarrassed in the media. There's so much stuff to go to the media to with, with, with issues here. So much stuff. And the media, they normally don't take our issues unless it affects the passages in some form or fashion. That's why I created Progressive Action TV. So we could get our issues out there on a normal basis and make allies with the public. Because one thing that the MTA know how to do, they know how to throw the public and the workers against each other. Point when it's contract time. Every time it's contract time, 
one of the MTA PR people go to the media and say, well, we may have to raise fares because um, the transit workers contract, the transit workers contracts is up. This is one way they, they actually invite the public to beat us up and assault us. They come out with this fake narrative all the time, all the damn time. So all this time, they telling us that we can't have masks. They doing all this cleaning. They wasn't giving us no PPE. Guess what they had during this whole time? Oh, yeah, this is why I'm disgruntled. This is why I'm disgruntled. You guys had a pandemic plan the whole time. Everything that's listed in that pandemic plan, you guys ended up doing. But let me tell you the reason why they didn't know about the pandemic plan. They did not know about the pandemic plan because Sarah Feinberg, Pat Foy, Pat Warren, this is not their industry. They didn't know a pandemic plan existed. The MTA will hire a hockey coach to coach an NBA team just because that hockey coach is a coach. They don't look to try to fit you if in your industry. They don't say, um, yeah, you know what? You ran, uh, the, the MTA will hire the person who operates the screen machine in Great Adventure just because the screen machine run on the track. This is how stupid this company is and the decision making. They will hire the person who controls the screen machine and great adventure to be a boss of New York city transit because the screen machine run on the track and it runs at high speeds. And they think that this person know about transit issues. This is how this company thinks. This is how this company thinks. So none of them knew about the pandemic plan and by them not knowing about the pandemic plan, what happened? Workers died. My co-workers died. Your co-workers died. Our co-workers, family members, loved ones are suffering because this company did not do the right thing for us. And then you start getting into this political theater. Let's be, like, we going to be a hundred percent because they've been lying and twisting for too long. You have Cuomo blaming Trump. Let's let's talk about that for a, reason, a, a second. Everybody know that Trump is incompetent. It's no secret there. I mean, they were saying he was incompetent his first day in the White House. All right, we already get that. Why would you rely on an incompetent leader to be competent in a serious real-life crisis, global crisis? How can you expect that president to be competent for something so real as what we, we 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 went through these past seven eight months in New York City, how can you how how can you expect that from him? But you guys play the game. See, let me tell you something: how this presidential and this governor stuff work. The governors are actually the presidents of their states. The president don't have control over the states. It's not like what we think. You think the president of the United States have control over each state? No. The governor is the president of his or her state. This falls back on Cuomo. So when you see Cuomo playing these games of, well, it was Trump. Well, Trump didn't do this. Trump didn't do that. No, it was your fault, Cuomo. You the president of, 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 um, of, of New York State. You're you're the president. When 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 Trump was talking about, um, we're going to send national guards to New York. What did you say, Cuomo? He's not doing that. He he don't he can't tell me what to do in my state. So pick and choose which one it is. Can he tell you what to do in your state, or he can't tell you what to do in your state? Because these COVID deaths is on you more than Trump. I don't want to hear about. No national supply of of mass. You want to know what you could have? You could have had a a, a a New York State um supply worth of mask. But you want to know what you and your father decided to do? Y'all guys decided to to build jails instead of, instead of building factories. You guys decided to build jails instead of building more hospitals. 
You guys figured that incarceration was more important than health. Don't think that we ain't forget about that Cuomo. Do not think that we, we forgot about that. You guys, the, these guys, they listen, let's be real. All this essential workers stuff is mostly people of color. They do not care. They do not care. You know how, you know, I was sick. I still could not get a COVID test. I could not get a COVID test and I was sick. I had one of my, my, my white coworkers call me because we keeping in contact. Though. I'm like, yo, I'm sick, bro. He said, yo, come to Nassau. Come to Nassau. They tested me and you getting your test the same day. But in the minority community, I had to fight for a test. These people, these people is crazy. And y'all want to know, y'all want to know why I'm disgruntled. I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. Want to know why else I'm disgruntled? Yeah. I'm disgruntled because y'all protect the white bosses, but y'all crucify everyone else. Y'all go out of y'all way to protect the white bosses. Let's not forget about what Jason Brown said. He said, remember, remember white people. Your sole purpose during this time is to protect people of color while they are destroying the city. He made these such insensitive comments while we was going through this whole George Floyd thing. And what the MTA did, they covered for him. They covered for him. The MTA covered for him. They, 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 I'm going to tell you what they did. I'm going to tell you what they, I got the paperwork too. I'm going to tell you what they did. The MTA, he was counseled on this before. And I'm, uh, this going to be a whole nother separate show that I'm doing blowing up management to show them the game they play getting Dan's late. To when one of their own is being written up. I'm going to expose all of that. But the truth with Jason Brown is that Jason Brown was counseled about his behavior on social media. Um, mainly these things right here. Back in 2017. He took a picture with another supervisor. Talking about how to further torture and discipline hourly over breakfast. Once again, let's, let's, let's be real here. Most of the hourlies that work here is people of color. It's people of color. The comment he made during the George Floyd incident, he was never, he knew he was protected. He, he, he said that with impunity. He said that with impunity because he knew he was protected to say that. When he said this comment about he wanted to um, discipline hourlies, to torture and discipline hourlies over, over breakfast, he knew exactly who he was talking about and what he was doing. He knew about it all. And then back, and like I said, these are his comments. They, the MTA knew about his comments. It goes back to six years ago. He said, no, Zimmerman was driving to the target. Oh, I mean to target. Yes, I'm disgruntled. Why I'm disgruntled? Because you guys protected him. You guys knew of his behavior. But what happened, this is the truth. This is the truth. I don't know how much labor relations. I don't know who the good people of labor relations are. If there, if, if there's any. I know, I know that they're there. No, nah, I'm gonna take that back. I'm gonna take that back. There are some good people in labor relations. And I think that they were duped. I'm not gonna say no names. I'm not gonna say any names. But I think that they were duped. When you probably seen Jason Brown file, there probably was nothing in it. Probably was clean as a whistle. Jason Brown file was probably clean as a whistle. The truth is, is that he was counseled on this before. I have the paperwork. I have the paperwork. Jason Brown was counseled on this before. What happened was before the paperwork got to labor relations it wasn't in there anymore it was not in there anymore and i got the paperwork and i've been i've been sitting on it i've been sitting on it and i'm going to do it like i said i'm gonna do a whole show regarding 
talking about these managers because this needs to be exposed. These people at the top, they do not care about people of color. They do not care about people of color. Um, Kim Moore Ward, my sister, I, 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 don't, I don't have no ill feelings towards her, but she's playing a game with them. One day I had emailed management. I CC'd every single last one of them. It has something to do regarding COVID and, and the health and safety of workers. And my sister, Kim Moore Ward, not and not any of the other, not any of the other people. All other people was Caucasians. The black person, Kim Moore Ward, because she wanna show that she belongs. She wanna show that she's one of them. She wanna show that she's not afraid of me. There's nothing to be afraid of me, sis. Afraid of, sis. There's nothing to be afraid of. But you were the one who jumped out the 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 the, the box and, and I don't even know what you was thinking. To say that, well, who's gonna be the one to tell him since he's not elected? Um, that we can't talk to him. And then magically what happens? I get an email from Kim Moore Ward saying that she can't talk to me because I'm not elected. So I'm aware of how these things work, sis. I get it. You're trying to fit in. You're trying to show your white bosses that you're one of them. You're trying to show your white bosses that you could be trusted, that I could take this guy down. And, and this is how it normally works. This is how it normally works. They always use a black person to take down a white person. I'm, I'm not the average employee. We get that. We get that you guys are targeting me. You guys tried to say I was bringing guns to work. Like I said before, one of the reasons why I don't own a locker in New York City Transit, because if they get a report of having a gun at work, they're not going to wait for me to come opening up my locker to say, um, can you open up your locker? If they get a report of a gun, they're going to go pop that locker, not wait for me. They're going to pop the locker and say that they found it. I don't trust this company. Then you guys put fictitious investigations on me and true in my, 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 my personal info. I don't trust you guys. You guys are desperate right now. You guys are desperate. You guys are so desperate. That y'all went, and I have to go back to this. This disgruntled employee continues to make false claims, and the MTA is appealing the ruling based on the facts. You damn right I am disgruntled. Not only am I disgruntled, I'm angry. I'm upset. I'm stressed out. I have anxiety. You guys caused this. And, and, and guess what? I'm not alone. I'm not alone. People, yo, I'm going to be very honest with you guys. When I first came to the MTA, um, I thought I, was, I thought I had an excellent job. I love the job. I love the function of my job. But I'm thinking I'm a, I'm a part of a great organization. I'm thinking I'm a part of a great union. Your first weeks, literally, well, your first days, literally, in the MTA, especially if you're in an operational position, they scare you half to death. They tell you if you mess up, you're going to get fired. If this happened, you're going to get fired. You can't do nothing at this job. You can't do anything at this job. I'm thinking I was a part of something great in New York City. This job, like I said, I like the function of the job, but the politics of this job is one of the worst is one of the worst that you will ever experience in, in, in the job. I had plenty of jobs. This the dealing with the upper managers here, this is one of the worst oppressive companies. Repressive companies. Big stick management. They don't care about your health and safety. They violate us every which way they can. Now I don't want to deter anyone not to come get a come get this job because there's going to be change here. There's there's going to be change here. But I'm I'm thinking like wow, I'm a part of a great and I'm and 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 when I first came here I had a plan. I said, "You know what? I'm going to come in. I'm going to take tests, I'm going to move up. I'm I want to be some something in this company." 
I got called for supervision in 2016 and I didn't take it because I didn't want to be a part of them. I think that the leadership here, they, they are not leaders. And, and, and if you stand in there, sitting there, like they say, I think Gandhi may have said this. If you choose silence, you choose the side of the oppressor. Yes, they are, they are great supervisors and managers here to get along with. They cool, they courteous. But you want to know what? If you sit in there silent and you know what's going on in this company and you're not saying anything about it, you done chose your side in my eyes. You done chose your side. Nobody do not care about the workers here. They they treat it here like a right to passage, the, the women's issues. And we're talking to both sides of the coin as far as the, the women in the union and the women in the MTA. They look at it as a right to passage for women who's eight months pregnant to still be operating at their tools. They look at they look at it as a right to passage for for women in their third trimester to still be pulling garbage. And, and climbing up trains and operating buses and 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 swinging mops and they 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 look at it as as if we did it you could do it too, but then you have the type of woman like Sarah Feinberg who never worked our job a day in our life probably don't even understand our jobs. They are responsible for making actions. They are responsible for negotiating contracts and telling us what we can have and what we can't have. They responsible for this. And, 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 and we sit there and we allow it. We don't push back. We don't say nothing. And that's just because we just some resilient people. Once you come working for New York City Transit, you, you, you put on a shell of resilience. We are some resilient people. We, we come to work in snowstorms. We come to work in hurricanes. This city moves 24 seven. We, we work in some of the worst conditions. Ever in the sub, the subways is a, is a whole, n it's the underworld for real. We work in some, some crazy environments. We don't have the nicest supervision. We don't have the, 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 the most courteous work rules, but we still come to work every single day to make this city run. Case in point was this whole entire pandemic. We sat there and, and, and had this city running without a doubt. We had the city running. And the thanks that we get is a whole bunch of lies and deceit coming from upper management. This is this is this is the thanks that we get. These people do not care about the workforce. They do not care about the workforce. How I think think about this. I got sick at work. The MTA accepted my case. They did not controvert my case. These people decided that because I am an activist, that because I am a whistleblower, that they felt the need to retaliate against me and not pay me for six, seven months. You get sick at work. And you get punished for getting sick at work because you want better working conditions for your, your co-workers. You want respect from management. You don't want to be talked down to like you're a child and, and they are the adult in the room. Because that's how managers and supervisors, that's how they view us. They think that they are, they, they are the adult in the room and we are their kids. They could talk to us whichever way they want to. They could tell us to do stuff out, outside of our, um, our work rules. This is, this is how they operate here. This is how they operate here. These, these people, these people are crazy. They do not care. The MTA do not care about their workers. So when, when Tim Mitten says that I'm a disgruntled employee, I wear that with a badge of honor, sir. Yeah. I wear that with a badge of honor. I am disgruntled. I'm disgruntled because you guys made me that way. I have every right to be disgruntled. And so do all of my coworkers. We have every right to be disgruntled. But change is going to come. And we're going to show you guys what real, what, what, what disgruntled really looks like. The shelf life, y'all shelf life is up. 
Y'all shelf life is up. And when I do this show, when I do this show about management, and I got videos, I got paperwork, I got dance, I got um, I got Dan histories, I got a whole bunch of stuff. When I do this show to show you guys how managers actually treat the people who they like, the people of their hue versus how they treat us, you guys is going to be appalled. You guys is going to be upset. You guys is going to be angry. And this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. Um, for everyone who's watching, um, if you would like to donate to the Progressive Action TV show, you could donate. Um, via Progressive Action 100, that's the cash app. If you want to donate, my chest is getting tight. I'm not too excited today. If you would like to donate via um, PayPal, the PayPal is Progressive Action. But this is just the beginning. This fight, this fight is just the beginning. And once again, Tim Mitten, I wear that disgruntled title you gave me. With a badge of honor. I hope you wear. And be ready for what we got coming down the pipeline. To show you guys how you really treat us. I'm going to keep you busy. I want to see you explain the racism. I want to see you explain the videos. I want to see you explain the paperwork. Because it's coming. You might as well ask Feinberg for a raise right now. Because it's coming. I'll catch you guys later, man.